Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to be creating this adorable little mushroom cubby card. And this is a brand new set from Art Impressions and we'll also be using a brand new oval die set as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So since we're making an oval shaped card today, we're going to create an oval frame using the Art Impressions brand new nested oval die set. And then for cardstock, I'm starting off with the Distress Wood Grain cardstock from Tim Holtz. And I've also got some heavyweight craft cardstock. Now I want to take a couple of dies from this die set. I'm taking the largest one and then the third largest one. And we're going to line these up so that it creates a really nice frame. And what I'm doing here first is just taping the dies together. I'm not taping them down to the cardstock yet. I just want the dies taped together because we're going to be die cutting several of these frames and I want them all to be exactly the same. Now that we have the dies taped together, we can add a little bit more post-it tape to hold that onto our cardstock. So let's go ahead and run this first one through and that'll give us the first frame out of that wood grain. And then for the rest of the frames, I'm going to be using that heavyweight cardstock. So you can see my dies are still connected together. And I'll go ahead and run those through about, I think I created four of the craft color and one of the wood grain. So now since these are all exactly the same, we can go ahead and glue these together. I'm using my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive to attach these. And that'll give me a little time to move those around and make sure they're lined up really well. Now for ink, I'm using the Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide Ink from Tim Holtz, and I've got a foam applicator tool. I'm using the foam applicator just so I can get nicely down into those little nooks and crannies on that wood grain cardstock. So I'll go ahead and add a layer of this all the way around. And then once that's done, I'm also going to add that color around the edges. And I will darken up the edges a little bit, so I'm adding a little bit extra ink, and that'll just set this frame a little bit better. So you, I think you can see that there. For the card base, I'm going to start with a piece of cardstock that measures four and a quarter by eleven inches. I'm scoring it at five and a half inches, and we're going to cut that oval card out of this piece of cardstock. So I'm taking that largest oval die and we want to create a little hinge at the top of our card. So I'm going to have that die overlap the fold, that folded score line, a little bit. So it depends on how wide you want that hinge to be. So I'm sliding it up maybe about a quarter of an inch maybe just a little bit more than that and then I'm going to go ahead and tape this down and then I can run this through the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine and I'm running it through a couple of times just to make sure I completely cut through that heavyweight cardstock. So now let's remove the post-it tape and you'll see we have the base for our card and don't worry that it's flat at the top we're going to fix that here in a second. Now let's go ahead and create that panel for the front of the card that will complete that oval. And this is the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And you can see that's how it's going to layer up. So let's create a pretty background for our little mushroom cubby. And I'm starting off with a piece of post-it tape and I'm going to lay it across the bottom of the card. I've come up maybe about three quarters of an inch from the bottom and I'm using the peeled paint distress oxide and this will create our grassy border. So I'm just masking off the top part so that we can create a separate color for our sky. So again I'm using that foam applicator tool and I'll apply a nice coating of this color ink and then I can go ahead and remove that post-it. Now we are going to want to mask off the sky and the post-it tape won't stick if it's not completely dry. So you do want to make sure you completely dry that. And then when you place the post-it tape over the grassy border, you want to leave a little sliver of that green color showing. 
you want to have a little bit of overlap between the sky and the grassy border. So I'm grabbing the seedless preserves, and this is such a beautiful color. I'm going to add a nice heavy coating of it down along the grass line. I want that shadow to be down at the bottom, and then I want it to get lighter as we go up towards the top. And I just thought this color for the sky would just be so pretty. And then we're going to come in with the spun sugar pink distress oxide at the very top. So it'll get lighter as we get up towards the top of the card. And these two colors blend together beautifully. So take a little time to blend those colors nicely so there's no break between the two. You get a nice transition from the darker tone to the lighter tones. Now I've got my Distress Sprayer. I've got just a little bit of water in there and I'm going to spritz it onto my glass media mat. And then I'm going to use a small paintbrush and spatter this entire panel. And that is going to give us some really pretty um, texture and interest to the background. I'm blotting that up with a paper towel. And now I'm going to go back to the seedless preserves. I'll place a little bit on my glass media mat, add a little bit of water to that, and then we'll spatter this again with this seedless preserves color. And again, we're just trying to create some interest in that sky. So I've peeled off the post-it tape and we can set that aside to dry. You'll see that frame is gonna fit right over top. So now I've got the brand new Art Impressions Mushrooms Cubby Set. And this is just adorable. It comes with the coordinating dies. And I just think this is fantastic. This is one of my favorite ones from the new collection. And I'm going to be coloring this with the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. And I'm starting off with the Mocha Brown. Now, although it's called Mocha Brown, and I know I've spoke about this in other videos, and even when I did the color swatching for the new Zig colors, um, I found that this really kind of has a, like a burgundy color to it. It's not really a brown color, but it is beautiful. And it's going to blend out so pretty. And I'll just keep adding that same color for some shadowing. So I'm not going to introduce a second color on the top of the mushroom. And I thought this would look beautiful with the sky that we've created. I did go on the internet to see what, what different colors mushrooms would be. And I actually found one that was this color. And so I was really thrilled about that because this was the color I had in my head. And, uh, and I think it's going to work out really great with the sky. So let's add again some shadows and I'm kind of keeping that center area the lightest. And I know I always say this, but these are a water-based pen. So you could certainly use a water brush to do your blending here as well. I'm going to show you how I did the coloring for everything around that mushroom, including the mushroom, but I'm not going to show you on camera how I colored in all the little critters. I just didn't want the video to be too, too long. And I did want to spend a little time showing you how I created the base for the card. So I'll continue using that color up towards the top of this little mushroom. And this is just so cute. Now, when we use the coordinating dies, they are actually going to create little openings in those windows. And then the little doors, the two little doors will open and close. So that's where we're gonna tuck in some of our little critters. It's just these little cubbies and there's quite a few in the Art Impressions collection. And they are just so cute and so interactive. And what I do love is that they, you can mix and match all these different cubby sets together. Now here I've got the beige and I'm kind of keeping that darker part of the beige down towards the bottom. And I'm just adding a couple of layers of that beige along the bottom edge of each of these little oval shapes and then pulling it up towards the top. And I'll use that same beige color for the base of the mushroom. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of the mid brown for some shadowing. And I just found this really fun to color in. Again, I just think this is so adorable. 
and it's just so interactive. You could put anything behind those little windows. You don't have to put the little critters in there like we're going to do today. You could have that door open and put a little sentiment in there. You could personalize it by putting someone's name down in there. So this is really fun. And again, I think this would work well with a lot of the other little pieces that you have in your other cubby sets. I know a lot of you collect these cubby sets, so try to take a look at those and see what you can mix and match. And then I'll, I added a little shadow there, and I'll do it again on this side with the mid-brown, just to give it a little contrast where that grass meets the base of the mushroom. And look at all these little critters. Again, the butterfly could be used on any card, any of your spring cards, the dragonfly, the little snail. There's a bumblebee. You will see, I colored in the bumblebee in yellow, but at the when you see the finished card, you'll see that I did add some black. I don't know what I was thinking when I colored that in. I just colored in the body all yellow. And afterwards, I realized what I had done. So. When you look at the finished card, you will see that I added a little stripe of black on that B. So again, I'm adding that mid-brown up towards the top here and around this window, up underneath there, and then again, just creating a few little shadows here. Along with the nested oval dies, which I believe you get 13 different ovals in that set, so that's amazing to me as you get so many. You could do so many different sizes and so many different ways of layering. But there's also the nested circle dies, the nested square dies, and the nested rectangle dies. And again, there's a ton of dies in each of these sets. And then one of the newer sets also is the nested heart dies. You get one scalloped heart. The largest one is a scallop. And then the rest are just the simple plain hearts that you can set inside that scallop. So these are really nice, these sets. I will list those and link those down below for you, as well as all the other products I'm using today. But if you're interested in taking a look at those, I'll list those for you. So you can really start to see how this little mushroom is coming together. Now I'll switch to light gray and gray. I'll color in the base of this little lamp that's outside the mushroom house. And then I'll also use it on the hardware, on the doors, and the windows. And also on that little chimney. So now let's switch over to dark yellow, evergreen, and green gray putting a little bit of that lightest color around the edges. Then I'm adding the, the mid color and the darker color, and I'll just blend that out towards the edges, keeping the center of these leaves the darkest. And I'll do the same thing for the rest of those leaves. Then let's switch over to the stem on the flower, and I'm using light green and dark green, just to add a little variation of the green color here. I'll do that on all the stems for the flowers. And then I'm going to use that same combination down at the bottom to do the grass. Now, in the end, a lot of that didn't show, so I didn't really need to do that much, but I wasn't sure at this point, so I did color that in. Next, we can go ahead and color in the flowers. I'm using yellow and orange. I'll start off with that yellow. I'll add a little bit of orange to the base of each of those petals, and then I'll just pull that out towards the tips. Just giving a little shadow there around the center of the flower. You can always come back in with a little bit more of that orange and get a nice shadow there. And then I'll switch back to the beige and mid-brown to do the center of each of those flowers. And then let's switch to the plum mist to do this little flower. And again, I'm adding the flower down or the 
darker color down towards the bottom and then pulling it up towards the top. And I did color in the rest of the little critters off camera using a same, the same combination of colors, just kind of a variety of those. And there you can see where those little bees, I didn't add the black to the bees. So I do that at the end. I'll show you that at the end. I'm using my white gel pen to add a few little polka dots and just adding a few highlights and a little bit of interest to the, the images. So let me give you a closer look at the finished coloring and I just think these colors are so pretty together. So let's go ahead and grab the coordinating dies and some post-it tape and we can go ahead and tape these down and then we can run those through the die cutting machine and you can see that cuts out those little windows and then the little doors are on hinges and they open up. So now I've got my little critters. I'm going to tuck these in some of these openings. I'll do this now before I start assembling my card. So I can go ahead and have these peeking out of the windows and out of the little doors. And I'm just using my reverse tweezers to let those dry. So I'm just using those as little clamps so that everything will dry. So this is the fun part. You can kind of play around with where, with where you want to put all of your little critters and just kind of have fun with this. So I'll go ahead and tuck all of these in place. And there's so many of them. You have quite a few to choose from. You don't have to use them all, but I couldn't, re I couldn't resist. I just thought they were all so sweet. And then I'll save the little gnome for the front of the card and the little butterfly as well. So let's go ahead and apply glue all over the front of the card. And we can glue down that panel. I'm just using my finger to make sure I have glue right up to the edge. And then I can go ahead and add this panel to the front. And now you can see that you won't be able to see that little hinge from the front of the card. It will look perfect from the front and it will lift fine when you go to open and close your card. And now I've got that frame and my little mushroom. So I'm going to glue that mushroom down. Now, if you do want the doors to open and close, make sure you don't put any glue behind the door. Just kind of go around that area. And now I can add that really pretty wood grain frame. And make sure you line that up. Just take a little time to line that up. And now for the little gnome, I'm going to actually put some foam tape at the top, up near the top of his head, and then glue his feet to this frame so it'll lay nice and flat. And for the butterfly, I'm just using my fingers to curl up the wings just a little bit. I'm going to cut a little sliver of the foam tape so I can pop it up. And I'll just place that down the center of the butterfly. And then I'll add just a little glue where it touches that frame area. And now we can work on the sentiment. So I'm using the journal template die set and you get tons of dies in this set. You know, I've, you've seen me, me use this set several times. It's designed to create the journals, but I use all these little separate pieces all the time. And I thought this would be cute for the sentiment. I'm going to just place this kind of rounded edge one around the sentiment. I'll tape that down and run it through the Sizzix Sidekick machine. And then we'll also die cut that little frame right above it there. And I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And then we'll color in this frame. And I wanted it to match the background or the sky on, on the front of the card. So I'm going to go back to the Seedless Preserves 
and the spun sugar. I'm starting with the seedless preserves. I'll add it kind of down towards the bottom and then we'll come in with the sponge sugar up towards the top and just blend those two together. Now we can go ahead and glue the sentiment right in the center of that. I did set that aside to dry a little bit before I glued this together. You can see how cute that is. So let's go ahead and attach this to the inside of the card. That sentiment says, sending lots of bugs and kisses, which is just perfect for this card. I've got my Wink of Stella clear glitter pen. I'm going to add some sparkle here and there, just for a little bit more interest. And I'm just cleaning off that glitter pen as I change colors. I don't want to transfer the colors around. So you see me scribbling onto a piece of scrap paper there. That's all I'm doing is just removing any color. If you're using your Copics, you don't have to worry about that because it won't transfer the color. So let's take a closer look at the finished card. And I'm just pointing there because you could cut a little sliver off the bottom of the inside of the card if you want it to sit uh, on your tabletop. Otherwise it will roll around. So you can go on the inside of the card and cut a little sliver at the bottom and that will allow it to stand upright on your tabletop. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.